Looking out from Myrtle Point on Mount LeConte, it's hard to imagine the Great Smoky Mountains as anything other than the lush national park that draws millions every year. But a century ago, the park's third highest peak was also one of its only bastions of wilderness amid the march of industry. There had been so much logging that had gone on in southern Appalachia, and LeConte was one of those areas that uh, still looked relatively untouched. The Champion Fiber Company owned the mountain, and Colonel David Chapman with the Great Smoky Mountains Conservation Association struck a deal that would set the stage for turning the logging-scarred Smokies into a national park. And according to Ken Wise, the retired co-founder of UT Library's Great Smoky Mountains Regional Collection, the group needed someone to get a camp ready. The Great Smoky Mountains Conservation was trying to uh, procure that land for a new national park and they wanted somebody up on the uh, Leconte to keep sanitary conditions and to build a cabin for people to visit and uh, just take care of the area until they could take possession of the, of the mountain. A 24-year-old from Knoxville caught Chapman's attention. By the time the Conservation Association recruited him, Paul Adams was already an experienced outdoorsman, co-founding both the East Tennessee Ornithological Society and the Smoky Mountains Hiking Club. This new job would send him to the summit of Mount Leconte for nearly a year, starting in the summer of 1925. But National Park Librarian Archivist Michael Aday says, Adam's mother didn't like the idea of her son being alone in the mountains. And she wanted him to have uh, a companion, and she recommended that he should get a dog. As fate would have it, a friend was taking care of a police dog after its owner, a Knoxville detective, was killed in a gun battle. He invited Adams over to meet it, and the pair seemed to bond instantly. With some negotiation, Adams bought the powerful black German Shepherd, named Cumberland Jack II, for $250, equal to more than $4,000 today. And he gave his canine companion a new name to match their mountainous home. He changed it to Smokey Jack. Adams recognized the dog's intelligence and knew the newly dubbed Smokey Jack could be more than just a friend atop LeConte. David Chapman, who was a World War I veteran, told him about the uh, U.S. Army and the cavalry how they took dogs and trained them to run dispatches behind lines. So Paul Adams decided that he would be able to train Jack to do something similar. Keeping with the military inspiration, Adams went to an army salvage store in Knoxville. He had a set of uh, saddlebags uh, made for the dog. The saddlebags, originally intended for cavalry horses, gave the German Shepherd a new purpose. He trained Jack to go from the top of Mount LeConte all the way down to Ogle's store in Gatlinburg. And he would put a note, a shopping list, and some money in the bags. And Mr. Ogle was the only person who could actually handle the dog. He'd take the money and put nails or flour or whatever it was, put them in the saddlebags, put the change in there, and the dog would run right back up the mountain. For nine months, Smokey Jack made the trek to and from the mountaintop, carrying up to 30 pounds at a time, while Adams built the first permanent camp on Mount LeConte. It was a very crude, sort of a balsam uh, log lean-to uh, with an outdoor kitchen. Adams documented their adventures atop LeConte in journals that were later turned into novels. Some stories recount the dog's heroics, like the time he helped Adams back to camp after a fall in Huggins Hell. They got on a rather narrow ridge and Paul fell off and uh, he was knocked unconscious. And when he wakes up, his water bottle has broken, but the dog is still there. Others detail the lengths Adams went to in breaking Jack's bad habit of killing chickens on homestead farms. So Paul took one of the chickens that he had to buy and took a piece of wire and wrapped it around the dog's neck and let it rot for a week. The pair also popped up in newspapers with tales of the young man of the mountain and his fine German police dog. It really is sort of the first chapter of the story about Great Smoky Mountains National Park. But spring 1926 spelled an early end for the duo's time on LeConte. Paul Adams got fired after the first year. Uh, we don't know why. It uh, may have been he just didn't quite have enough experience to run a camp. And it was taken over by uh, Andy Huff's son, Jack Huff, who built what we now have the uh, LeConte Lodge. Adams and his saddlebag-wearing sidekick left the Smokies and eventually moved to Crab Orchard in Cumberland County. And he changed the dog name back to Cumberland Jack. Cumberland Jack stayed at his partner's side for nearly a decade more, living to the ripe old age of 14. Adams buried his constant companion on his land and continued his work as a celebrated naturalist until his death in 1985. Though their time on Mount LeConte was brief, and the camp they built no longer stands. 
Adams and Cumberland Jack still have a foothold in the park's foggy foothills. Cumberland Jack and Paul Adams are revered, legendary figures in the, the history of the Smokies. The Great Smoky Mountains Collections Preservation Center in Townsend houses one of the few surviving relics of their work. Everyone always wants to see Cumberland Jack saddlebags. This is sort of a, a physical representation of the work and the minutia that went into building support for establishing a park in Southern Appalachia. From Little Acorns, Mighty Oaks Grove, uh, and um, this is, this is a, an amazing little acorn that we have in the collections. And beyond historical archives, the duo's adventures live on in print. Paul Adams, the fixture in the lore of the Great Smoky Mountains, and the dog is just probably the most fascinating part. Wise, who co-edited the book Smoky Jack, based on Adams' journal, says it acts as a period piece for a pivotal point before the park. The book is, uh, has these episodes with, with the really good human interest uh, happening in the Smokies at that critical time when we're trying to decide if it can be a national park. Whether it's pinched in well-worn leather, printed on a page, or even presented on a Gatlinburg eatery, the legacy Paul Adams and Cumberland Jack left behind lives on with the millions of visitors who come to the Great Smoky Mountains every year. And, perhaps more so, with the adventurous hikers who reach the top of Mount LeConte.